Hello and welcome. Let's, uh, I'm going to do this again, which is NEM or XEM and GRS as well as Bitcoin and US dollar trading them all together. When I did it the first time, I did it in probably 16 hours off and on three different times throughout the day, we'll say. And this is what my final score came out to being. That of being up, starting with pretty much nothing. Or very little, rather. Uh, 17.365 Bitcoin, 92,425 US dollar net worth at this point. And then I played it quickly on that black screen, which has no emphasis in caring what this, these two prices are against Bitcoin. And what the price of Bitcoin is against the uh, US dollar. And I got to 49 Bitcoin. So I want to see if I can get past that number, see if I can get anything above 50, or hopefully noticeably above 50, as I start with uh, the same as I did before. So on the worksheet, I mean, this is how many rows there are. There's well over a thousand. This goes from uh, about uh, three years ago to about now, close to three years. Of data. We're going to start right back at number one, where the ratio goes to six and two thirds. It will start, of course, okay, it ends at six and two thirds. Let me just, of course, because this isn't the news. It ends, it ends at six and two thirds, it starts at 125. And these were all the things that were done for the th uh, trades and, or where I, things were done. This is all the trade section, and there might even be more in this uh, series. There was a lot of trades, 146 rows here, where I'd be buying and selling across the, uh, the start of the game. But how it begun was buying point two, basically two ninths of a Bitcoin at $450, working out to 100 US dollar cost. And within the 0 0.222 Bitcoin, that means after that you would buy 20,000 NEM at 363 Satoshi, we'll say, costing 0 0.07278. 16,000 GRS at the price point of 452, costing 0 0.0725. You add those two together, you're talking about 14. Five or so, which is uh, marginally, uh, it works out, I think, marginally less than uh, uh, two thirds the price of this. So, what I did in the game is I did a little more than 50% more starting numbers. So, I think I started with like 33,000 uh, GRS and like 41,000 NEM on that game that got those scores because if I was going to do that, it's not fair for me to just. Uh, not start that one with 0.222 as well. But my theory is if you know the price of uh, your altcoins against Bitcoin and you know the price of Bitcoin against the dollar, you, you can outperform just knowing what the ratio is in itself. So then, that was that what ratio, and I want to do as many series as it's uh, going to take. I'll uh, we'll probably put these in like 20, 24 minute parts and maximum one per day. I don't know how many parts it will take. It could take some time, but how, what other choices do I have when I really want to explain how one should go upon a lifetime, really, of trading? And lifetime, really, a series, like uh, years. In this case, it would be three of trading on the market. And. And and doing the most more and more you do of this you do as an individual, and the more of these you watch of mine even it's the same sort of deal. The more understanding, experience, focused you are, you you definitely be experienced. But within the experience, you're going to realize within the games. Oh, what did I do wrong here? And this is an example of exactly doing that on this uh, case. So then let's. Start this off. I'm going to make the notes section here smaller. They don't need to be too big. All this signifies to me is what I'm doing as far as what I'm trading. That's it. In fact, this is where I did the ratio to move over to the spreadsheet. I'm going to use this 
to write notes of different things like if there's something I really need to know. Okay, I'm selling this amount of uh, uh, th this against Bitcoin and I want to buy it back here. Just quick remembrance notes if there is any. I think I needed that. It's either I put it in here or I put it in a separate tab. So I'm going to put it in a separate tab. So I've got this set up. Again, every time I put a number greater than zero, it's going to uh, put the numbers in. So as we start off, we see the ratio move. Again, I want to take significant amount of time in figuring out what to do. But when nothing happens on the literal sense when you're trading the market, when you see your NEM coins, oh, it's barely done nothing. It's down 12 basis points. That's like, oh, 3 point something percent. Oh, GRS, it's down 24 basis points. That's like uh, 6%. And the ratio has moved like close to 2 3%. There's nothing you need to do. You just wait till the next day. And then again, oh, the ratio doesn't change the next day. Nothing to do. Now it's at 115. Are you happy with a 10 basis point move? I wouldn't be. No, 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 no need to uh, make any trade there. I want 11, 14 point basis move. See, my, my general rule is this. If I'm going to be selling at 10% moves and I'm going to have to sell less than 10% of what I own, I'm making a percent on the immediate play. And, that, and that's, not, that's not enough. 20% becomes more reliable because I base, basically be selling 15%. But if I sell 15% of uh, what I own for a 20% gain, that's 3%. That, that's okay, but it's not as good. But on, on say, a 25%, to me, that's a good minimum number. 25%, that means I can sell up to 20% of what I own. And if I take uh, a quarter of 20%, then that's 5%. So even if I do a little less, I can make like four something percent every single time. And that's a pretty good number. But you're always hoping for the markets to have amazing intraday moves so you can do better than that. And that does happen in this game. Obviously, within this series and so many uh, other times, it's just, oh, this market goes up 50%, 200%. Or six days, it goes up five times. All those types of deals that just make it spectacularly fun. And then it just even parlays better. Oh, it just went up in three days, 310%. And then over the next two days, it pulls back 62%. That's the volatility I'm looking for. So 15 basis points, not enough. And it goes down to 111. 103. 22 basis points. Not quite 25%. I like the low number. I'll take the difference of high and the low. Because I always want to see percentage moves going up. That's just the easiest way for me to look at it. Because it's different up, different down. So at a 22 basis point move, we're looking at barely over 20%. So let's wait. It goes to 166 on the opposite end. So yeah, of course it would have worked out to make a trade. But that's fine. The differential now is uh, 31 basis points. So on 12, that would work out to about 25%. So then, at a spot like this, you could get in there and make a ratio trade. So I'm just going to put ratio in here. And every single time I trade it, I'm just going to write that there. I'll bold this number as well. And then we'll go to trades. How this is set up on my screen is if I put the one in here, it will automatically put up what the current price was. And if I don't manually put the new price in, like I didn't here, then you're going to have to fix it because it automatically just figures, just asks what the last price is. So I didn't actually buy at the 338. I bought at 363. So I'm just going to change that there. And on the uh, GRS, it was 452, which is written in there manually. And so there we have it. So obviously, the market that goes up it's up 110 basis points, so this is down pretty good. 
So this to me is an obvious spot where you'd want to, again, make that type of trade. So how many do we want to sell? Well, 25%, the most I want to do is 20. So then, 20% 20 of 20,000 uh, 20, is 4,000. Let's hit the maximum number. And what does that mean on the other side? And I'm just going to write in 338 here so I don't forget and write 562 in here. I want to buy 1349 worth. I've already got this set for uh, uh, one quarter of 1% rake, which can obviously be cheaper than, but this to me, I'll take the highest in the standard to make it fair. So at uh, 1349, uh, and a ratio, well, let's just, just put random numbers in. That's going to be somewhere uh, above that number. Close enough. I mean, whatever, if there's a small differential. I got the Bitcoin to technically afford it. But in real life, if you got no Bitcoin on the exchange, in this case, what you would do is you'd have your NEM on there, either move it from your wallet or you have it on the exchange ready to sell. Okay, I'm going to type in sell 4,000. Okay, the price is 338. Oh, my Bitcoin balance is 0 0.01349. Now I'm going to go to the exchange with GRS. I'm going to push the all in button and I'm probably going to get somewhere around 2,400. So that's uh, generally how it's uh, going to uh, work that way. So let's move on to, uh, and basically what I want to do too is take a look at the wallet uh, after uh, each section and uh, just track how the results go because now I'm up 5.45 dollars or up 0 0.012 Bitcoin. And given the starting amount was 100, I'm up about 5% in the very early, early stages of playing this game. Let's move on. So after 166, what we can do is just even go like this. Okay, well, let's get what the exact number is. I want 25%. So 1.66 multiply 1.25, well, that's 208. And if something goes up from 1 to 1.25, or the, what is that of a 25% gain? If it were to fall back to 1, it would lose 25 on 125. That's 20%. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.8. So there we see. So I don't want to trade unless this ratio gets at least below 133 or above 2.08. See, there we go. Now you got that decision to make on the very next day. And it's a, it's a really obvious risk-reward basis for the risk of not trading is that the uh, price will just go back up and you're not going to be able to get the buyback, if you will. You'll, you lose out on a trade opportunity. The, and the risk as well, or, is, or the actuality of it, is by taking less than that move, so instead of going for a 25% move, going for like a 20-21% move, reduces your overall net gain profitability as well. The reward is you get a much better price, maybe even 120, 110, and you could get a much better gain. So let's go straight and not take that trade and move on and see what happens the next day. There we go. So 126. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a formula for that for the rest of this game so I can always see what the numbers are. After all, if you can't do math in your head, calculators do a really good job and take advantage of them. Anyway, 126 is that ratio in here. So let's make a trade. Push 1 to get the numbers in. So this market here, NEM, pretty much broke even but lost like less than 2%. But this one fell from 562 to 421. So you're basically buying it back up on the cheaper. So now you can just do a crossover and completion of a trade. And now you were able to gain 2,400 coins. So how many of those do you want to sell? 2,200, 21, 2,019. And probably don't want to go. Uh, probably 19 is not going to be worth workable enough. And how many of the 4,000 that you lost do you want to get back? 44, 45. Let's just say I want get I want 4,500 coins. So it would, co uh, it would cost me 1502 How many GRS do I have to sell to receive around 1.5? Well, 
Well, it's going to be under 24, so let's just see what 21 would show. Uh, that's significantly different. Uh, no, wait a second here. Yeah, that's minus 1,400. Let's go. Okay, why is this not working right? So you sold 4,000 before. We're gaining 4,500. Okay, it's it's a good gain. It's a, actually a spectacular gain. Okay, sorry for any of that delay. See, it's less than 36. So 3580 maybe. Close enough. So on that situation, you gain 500 at uh, the smart price here. So 500 additional XCM and 1160 on the uh, GRS. So uh, definitely a fantastic result. Now the uh, plays in the negative because markets have went down. So you're down about 5.7%. Let's move on to uh, the game again. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to put so 1.26 in here. So I'm going to go equals uh, this row multiply 0.8 for the down move and this one multiply 1.25 for the up move. And that was obviously I think 0 0.25 there we go so as long as it goes under 101 or at 101 or lower or at 158 or higher I don't need to trade the ratio so 119 don't need to do it 110 same thing 112 okay let's just keep there we go so 170 what happened to make this go to 1.7 in one day I like how it's 12 basis points or about 70% above my number, my target number to begin with, so a bit better of a gain. I can sell maybe a little more than I would normally have intended to, which is a nice feeling. And this market here went down from 333 to 327, where GRS went up to 421 to 555. So the increase in the gain is that of, well, for, if you take 130, the difference is 40, plus another 4 is 44. 44 basis points on 126 works out to a 35% gain. So the maximum sell, if I go 35 and I take that number divided by that number plus 100, tells me I can sell up to 26%. So 23, 22% would be a very nice, aggressive, safe wager, which is what I'm going to intend to do at this spot. And we're selling the GRS. The ownership of GRS is about 22,000. So 10% of that is 2,200. 22% is 4,400. And about 4,800 would be about 22%. So let's go into the trades. And let's trade 4,400 of these. And that would suffice for 0.02436 Bitcoin. Okay. Well, the score, uh, it's going to be something like, what, 66? More than that. Even more than that. Or less than that. There we go. So 7420 of the XCM and out goes 4400 of the GRS. Now the portfolio is back in a positive uh, position right now. And let's move on to uh, the game again. So last trade is in at 1.7. Let's uh, scroll this down. We'll put a ratio bar here. So if we're looking at this again later, we can see that that was what was done. And 129 is below the 136. So the GRS basically gave back a lot of its gains the very next day. Something, again, as a trader you're hoping for is for markets to go way up, not spend time there and go back down, vice versa as well. And therefore, it's a, a trade reversal of the last one. So this one is 316. 
which is what we're going to be. We're going to be selling something that's down 9 basis points or 3%, but the other one's down way too much. So then, we have for NEM 27,920 of them. So selling 7,000 would be a lot. 4,400 of the GRS we dished out. If we look at our wallet for GRS, 17,000, adding that amount would be a very, very good sum. So when deciding how many of what to trade, to me, I think I would just be happy to get pretty uh, what I got, what I sold back and take the gain on GRS. So therefore, if I sell if I gain exactly what I sold, which means I'm exactly where I was before that previous event happened, then I'm going to have a nice gain here because 5,000 of them, I might need to sell more. And I do because it's going to cost me 17.95 to buy those 4,400 and I'm only receiving 1576. So 5,600 would almost be enough. 5,700 would be enough. So there's the trade, 5,700 for 44, and the direct gain on this play is 1,720 of these coins. And when I look at my wallet, that's like 7% of my ownership just from that enchilada right there. And let's uh, continue on. We got maybe a few more minutes. I'm at the 22 minute mark now. I'd like to do 25, 26 type of... Uh, a numbers and even 30 is fine I suppose but I don't want to go too too long per video that is on to the worksheet okay 129 last trade let's put this in here so let's wait for the ratio to go below 103 or above 161 there's 113 106 105 we're close but not quite there we have it what happened for the ratio to go down 29 points well, this market went up from 316 to 384, and this one went down to 407 to 383. So the obvious is what you do. You sell the one that went up for the one that went down. So this is a new trade with the uh, ownership of uh, the XEM. I own 22,000 of them. 20%, about 4K. I could do a bit more than that since it's a since the move is a bit better, but not really. I'll just uh, stick with about 4,000. So we'll go minus 4,000 here. And then at this point, I should get somewhere close to the same, I would think. Well, not quite. Hmm. There we go. So 3,990 I gain here and costing 4,000 on that point. So the ratio is pretty much one. As we can, uh, yeah, it's uh, that of one. And you're down $5 or 5% as well as down 0.01 Bitcoin. Let's continue on. 103, which we're going to put the same... Well, this is easy. This is 80 or 125. So nothing there. Nothing there. 87, close. 91, not close. 85, 84, 87, 76. So ratio is in play. What happened... I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be looking for a few in a few seconds from now because I'm not looking on the left-hand side. I am now, and... Uh, Big decline on GRS is the answer because this market barely down, majorly down. Nothing wrong with selling coins that you uh, bought more expensive before in situations like this because, again, the whole journey for doing this is to decrease your net holdings of these coins. So then it's time to make a trade.
So of the XEM, how many do I want to sell? Well, I have 18,000, so 20% of that is about 36. And as far as what price, I was... Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with about 20%, so about 37 or so this time. So we'll go minus 3,700. And be able to pick up. Well, the ratio here is 280, so I should get, what, 51 maybe? Or not even, maybe 49. Ooh, that was closer. 13.75 versus 13.62. So what's 48.50? Pretty, pretty much right. Both are about the same numbers. So then after this trade, uh, there we have it. And on the wallet down 84 cents bitcoin value is uh, pretty much run, run that same number as well and xcm 14,000 the grs is uh, at the 30,000 number this will be the finished of part one because we're now close to 30 minutes in time uh, most likely tomorrow on sunday will be part two of this and this might be 15 parts but my theory is if I do one a day, maybe there might be a two, one or two, three day layoff because I don't feel like playing it. Either way, if I do like not more than one a day and I make it a good amount of time but not major like I think this number is, then I think it's going to work out pretty uh, good. And the whole point of this again is to uh, show just examples of how you would go through on a day by day level. And of course, from my own experience. Now, granted, I don't need to record it to do it, and oftentimes I don't because it's extra work and it's even a little slower because I'm not going to spend the time narrating as I would be playing this game and it's a game but in any game that's got scores as you can see here if you can do well to make those scores go high then good job but how many games can you actually do things with these scores well this one you can thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day bye bye